This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. And we're back with a Super Bowl champion edition of the breakdown, our final one of this season. I'm Matt Hamilton. That's Chase Daniel. And Chase, once again, <laughs> the Chiefs are Super Bowl champions. It was uh it's almost hard to imagine with where we were kind of in the middle of the season going through the offensive film to to what this offense evolved into, what this team evolved into and where they ended up. Um, but as you said all year, you never count out Patrick Mahomes and it's it's unbelievable. What was your biggest takeaway from what we saw from the Chiefs on Super Bowl Sunday? Well, not even on Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I mean, obviously they, they ended up winning, but uh, I think just throughout the whole season, just the resolve that they showed, right? Like when you're at the Chiefs status, and that is full-on dynasty mode, three Super Bowl wins in six years. I mean, Andy doesn't want to call it a dynasty. I'll call it a dynasty, and everyone else will too. It, it is. Like what they've done over the six years – as Mahomes start as a starter, like four AFC championships, okay, three Super Bowl wins, three Super Bowl MVPs, and if you look from the start of the year, um, this was easily um, the Chiefs' worst offense that they've put on a field since Patrick Mahomes came into the league. Like it wasn't even close. They were averaging like almost a touchdown less points per game than even last year. And yeah. a big part of that was, look, they didn't have the receivers, right? Everyone knows all these drops, all this stuff, and they still won. They still won it without a true, in my opinion, without a true number one receiver. Now, I think going into the year, you had no idea what Rasheed Rice was going to be. And then you look at the last seven, eight games of the year, he's tops in a bunch of categories for all yeah. receivers. So he really came on. I think that was really uh, good for the Chiefs to say, hey, we actually hit on this draft pick like, I, I think watching him, he could be a legitimate number one receiver. Uh, he's got the size, the speed, the hands, the run after the catch, everything that, that Andy wants. But that's the glaring hole, right, offensively. But if you look at overall with the defense and the special teams, now here's a bucker, probably the best season of a kicker really of all time, in my opinion. Like everything he's done this year, the special teams aspect, um, and then obviously it's the best defense. So – that, that he's been on. And, and so I look at it from a whole, it's like, all right, this might've been Patrick Mahomes' worst offense, but this is easily, I think his best overall team. So if you fix some things on the offensive side of the football, mainly receivers, uh, and, and I do think, and, and it's going to be asked, and we're going to talk about it a lot in this offseason, I do think they need to make a splash signing in free agency, a T Higgins type guy. They have to get a veteran wide receiver. You can't go back to the well again, when you're picking 32nd and, and, and think that, a legitimate receiver right away is going to be there that late in the draft. Now, this is a deep receiver draft class, but but I would love to see them get crazy and, and make a splash signing in free agency because if you look at it, they, they really return like everyone, like the defensive side of the football. That's the biggest issue, right? You got Chris Jones, you got LeJarius Seed, you got Willie Gay. In my opinion, you have to find a way to sign uh, Chris Jones. Like, Chris Jones can't leave. Like, he cannot leave. There's a, there's a bunch of... Uh, like obviously on the field accolades, but what he does off the field, in my opinion, the leader in the locker and behind Mahomes and Kelsey, like that vocal guy, you can't lose him. And then LeJarius C put together one of the best seasons as a corner in recent history, only allowed one touchdown pass all season long. That was the Buffalo game. And it was on a crazy scramble, scramble by Josh Allen. So he's playing. I don't know. I mean, I think you got to sign Chris Jones to a long-term contract. I think you got to find a way to maybe franchise tag LeJarius Seed or, I mean, you heard him on, I think your show. Like yeah, can, yeah, like hey, pay me, <laughs> pay me, like that. I think it's I think it's lost on a lot of people that, yeah, you know these guys and these all pros they love playing the game, but at the end of the day they got to get paid, man. Like they they that's what they're doing it for. The earning window is so short. When you have the type of leverage that Luxurious Need has, um, I, I think you're going to find. I mean, he's going to be in the twenty million dollar range, and it's just like how do the Chiefs. Out of the Chiefs find money, look, they could restructure Mahomes, they could do some other things uh defensively, but um yeah, it's gonna be an interesting offseason. But it's just like once again, you're it's the same old stuff, like Super Bowl champs again. Yeah, and I and I really do think while from a numbers perspective, this was far from Mahomes' most impressive season, I think when you look at how he adapted to what was around him as this year went on, I think it was his most impressive because he was able to say, all right, I don't need to be Superman. I don't need to try to 
take everything on myself. We have this great defense. You know, Travis is getting healthier. I need to just make the plays that are in front of me. And, and you know, when those times, you know, pick my spots to be super bad because we still saw those moments from him and we're going to get into the tape in a little bit. But um, he he picked those spots judiciously. He wasn't forcing it because in the regular season, we did see him forcing it at times. And, you know, he, he didn't go back to back games all year without a turnover. He goes through the entire playoffs with just one, um, which is pretty remarkable. And yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, what did you see? What was the difference you saw from him when we got into the playoffs? Because again, we watched this tape so closely all, all year long. Yeah. What was the biggest difference you noticed? Well, I, I just think you hit it. You hit it right on. I think that's just protecting the football, right? Like what were what wins in playoffs? And it's t- withstood the test of time. It's a really good defense and a really good run game. And quite honestly, like going into the Super Bowl, uh, the Chiefs had only thrown the ball 12 more times than they ran the ball the first three playoff games, which is remarkable. And you heard a little bit of a peek inside Mahomes' head after the AFC Championship win against Baltimore when he was talking about spags and that defense. He's like, I've had to train myself how to play differently, realizing that we have a really good special teams, we have a really good defense. If we score 20 points in the game, we have a really good shot at winning. And that's just that's a scary thought for the NFL because you're seeing a mid-season revolution and the player evolving – into a better player from a mental aspect of of checking certain plays, which you'll see in the film, versus understanding, hey, you know what? It's third and forever. Most of the time I'd run around, maybe throw a jump. I don't need to do that. Like, it's playing the field position game. It's it's all of that. And so while it might look sexy for all these playoff wins or these – I mean, people forget that the Chiefs didn't even clinch a playoff spot till two weeks left in the season. Like, like yeah. they were going down to the wire with the Raiders and the Broncos for the AFC yeah. West Championship, you know? And so I think that was the sort of the turning point. You heard Andy Reid talk about it. You heard Andy Reid talk to um, the head coach, Antonio Pierce, of, of the Las Vegas Raiders, and he was like, hey, thank you for teaching me a lesson. Like, like you can never take anyone lightly, and he knew that, but I think it was a good way, and not enough not enough being talked about, like, Andy Reid keeping the team together. I think he's been been fantastic. For obvious reasons yeah yeah and i think when, when you look at what happened with patrick towards the end of this year too like it sounds it sounds so simple right like don't turn the ball over protect it like make the plays that are there but but it's hard and i think it's harder when you have the talent that he has and you've accomplished what he's accomplished and it really is reminiscent of, of some of the stuff we've seen from tom brady in the past from that perspective like when you look at the 2019 patriots brady um, that won that Super Bowl over the Rams and that low scoring kind of ugly game. That's exactly the game the Patriots wanted to play because they knew that was their best way to win. And and even in that AFC championship game where they beat the Chiefs, you know, he wasn't trying to do it. he was checking to runs. Every time they gave him the light box, yeah. he was checking to a run. So um it's a it's a maturity out of Mahomes that, you know, even guys that are his senior, even guys that from a talent perspective are incredibly talented quarterbacks. You've seen them struggle making that adjustment. You've seen them struggle putting the ego aside and saying, "Hey, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna win with defense and run game first. Yeah, it's just been it's been an impressive run, man. Like, like it's just I can't believe that you know the Chiefs third Super Bowl and in six years, and then and it puts Andy Reid in in the running for one of the greatest of all times as well. Like winning that third one really gets you over that edge and, and into that talk. Obviously, you got a long way to go to to reach Belichick, but I mean, like there was a lot of talk of Andy Reid retiring. It's like, well, why? Like the, the thing's on autopilot yeah. pretty much. Like yeah. you got Mahomes, you got Veach building a legitimate roster. He still loves it. Like, I don't know. I mean, you could, you could, you could technically, I mean, see a three P like it's never been done before. Oh, yeah. And you know, they're, they're going to be the odds on favorite, which I'm sure they already are to, to win it again next year. And it's just more impressive because you do have that target on your back and you're getting everyone's best shot. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, and it's funny with Andy. I felt like after last Super Bowl, he sounded like a guy that was close that was close to retirement. And after this one, he just seems re-energized by what happened this year. Um, and and I think yeah, that three peat. I think it, it's on a route. I mean, it was on Mahomes' mind as soon as that game finished. And it's a yep. scary thought that they're already this locked in on next year. Um, but let's start digging into some of the tape because. What the Chiefs are able to do down the stretch, scoring on four straight drives to end the game after some of the struggles early on. 
This was the, we thought was a zone read at the time. They've revealed, or they say that this is actually a bootleg. What what stood out to you here? This ain't a bootleg. It's an RPO, man. <laughs> like, I don't care what they say. I mean, <laughs> look, I mean, if they call it a bootleg, that's fine. But it's man-to-man. Mahomes knows it's man-to-man. You're seeing no gray in motion, which is just like, give me a man zone indicator. That's it. Easily just moving the tight end to a trip bunch formation. And look, they got freaking Nick Bosa three times on this and all three times that they called this or a version of this the Tom and Jerry this naked that they call it he crashed and he crashed hard and there was no one for Mahomes Mahomes had over 60 yards rushing and no bigger than this I think this was a, a a really big play in the game and he sees that it's man to man and he just takes off. That's why That's why I'm just like, hey, you're running a little flat route, and I understand the receivers are running routes, but it, it is just next level by Mahomes. I mean, you're obviously seeing here, you're reading Bosa and being like, hey, there's no one got me. Look at the hole right there. It's just like, it's insane. And he didn't even try to slide. Like, he gets like six or seven more yards. 27 comes up, tries to pop him. It, it is, it's just such an easy read for Bosa. Like, you would, you would have thought after the first time they hit him on this that they would have talked about, hey, let's just – feathers what they call it like a feather technique yeah. and just see what happens because quite honestly if bosa doesn't chase the back right here then mahomes is sort of screwed like like it's just yeah. not much you can do you might have to throw it away um so yeah it's just an impressive play call at, at the right time and i think that's what you saw throughout the playoffs playoff pat coming out with his legs rushing not getting down and understanding there's a you know there's a need to get extra yards yeah, and it also, I talked about this a little bit on on Up in Adams yesterday. It speaks to the evolution of Andy Reid, too. And, you know, it really hammered home just how he he's evolved and how he tailored his offense to really make the best out of all of Mahomes' strengths, to really accentuate Mahomes' strengths. Because you look at what he was doing, you know, obviously, conceptually, the foundation of it is still what he was doing with Alex Smith, but he's added all these other wrinkles to really take advantage of what, of what Mahomes can do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just super impressive. And they, they don't call these plays in the regular season. Like everyone knows yeah. the kneecap injury yeah. or whatever the heck yeah. happened on the QB sneak. You've yet to see yeah. Patrick Mahomes run another quarterback seat, even though there was a couple third and one fourth and ones. I was like, they might bring it out because it was yeah. so close. Um, but they do bring these out in the playoffs and Mahomes loves running it. Like, like he's, he's not going to beat anyone in the 40, but he's got just enough juice to get around the edge and to get down. And he's just so smart on knowing when to run and how to run. It's not like you have to be some huge, like really fast player to be able to take off, but it's just, it's impressive. It's really is. Reminds me of another quarterback we saw in the state of Missouri uh, in the mid two thousands and knew how to pick his spots. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Right. Let's keep it moving to the next play here. Um, regulation winding down. This would have been a fifty yard field goal for Harrison Butker if the Chiefs don't pick up any more yardage. But huge play here to Kelsey. What stood out to you here? Fred Warner's on Travis Kelsey. Like, what? <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? Travis Kelsey was held to one target, one catch, one yard in the first half. He finished with 93 receiving yards, which gives him 92 in the second half, a huge chunk of it coming right here to really get them in uh, a chance to win it in regulation, which is even crazier. Now, um, look, dude, it's just it's what they run. When they get man-to-man coverage, they, they run shallow cross. That's yeah. all this is right here. They, they, there's some type of mesh. They have a, a dagger on the on the front side that they did play cover two. So you're seeing a man beater with a cover two beater all in one. And if you watch this boundary safety, he's on the O right here. He comes down and, and is a thief player. Well, if you're a thief player, you should be uh, outside leverage, okay, yeah. which is exactly what Fred Warner has. But if you're outside leverage, you better be able to pass this off. And they're not passing this off. The thief's not coming down. I mean, a perfect play call at the perfect time. And I, I, I don't know if I've seen a quarterback on this play, because we were on this play all the time when we were there, get to the shallow cross. I mean, he's taken a one-and-a-half step drop, and no, he knows that it's going to be wide open. Just just a yeah. perfect play call at the perfect time. Yeah, you know, and a great job from Noah Gray, too, getting in the way enough without they're picking interfering them. with Warner. Yeah. 
um, just perfectly executed. And we saw them uh, to your point. We saw them go back to this mesh uh, to these shallow crosses multiple times in the second half, and the Niners just had no answer for it. Um, so that sets up the field goal to get us to overtime. Let's go to the game winner. Mahomes eight for eight in the overtime hmm. session, capping it off with this one. What jumped out to you here? Gun trips, right? Bunch F shuttle, Tom and Jerry. I love the fact that they call it Tom and Jerry. Like they have fun with their play calls. They tag their play calls yeah. like as one word or two word. So it just tells everyone here. When I first watched this, um, I was uh, saying, "Oh, it's it's corn dog, it's corn dog, it's corn dog, it's corn dog." I was like, "From last year, everyone knows about it. Scored twice against the Eagles in last year's Super Bowl." And then you sort of watch it a little bit more. And I thought Andy Reid's quote on this and, and talking to Peter King about it was awesome. But this is really supposed to be a shovel pass to Jared McKinnon. And could you imagine Jared McKinnon being out for that long and then catching the game winner? Like, like this just tells me that no matter how much these receivers or these running backs maybe let the team down, in the biggest spot, in the biggest game in the world, you're running it to Jared McKinnon and Michael Hardman. Travis Kelsey's not yeah. there. Everyone else isn't there. Like, it's it's those. And I think that's the biggest thing um, about it is, like, it, it's just, it's 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 perfect. And, and I guarantee when they rep this play all week, they were not expecting Bosa once again to crash like this. And when Bosa crashes, he sort of blows up the shuttle. And you can see there's a hole. They have a pulling guard for, for the shovel pass. Yeah. But, it, yeah. you know, Kelsey, Kelsey gets in that corner's eyesight and... The unlikely, un- unlikeliness of the heroes in the world is catching a touchdown and win the Super Bowl and doesn't even realize he's winning the Super Bowl because everyone and their mom didn't know what was happening with OT. <laughs> it is unbelievable. And uh, you think back to last year, too, to your point, the guys that scored key touchdowns late in the game, it was Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony. And it's Andy Reid not being afraid to utilize everything that he has at his disposal. You don't know, you know, you know you have to account for Travis Kelsey, obviously, anytime they get close to the to the end zone, but he's not afraid. He, they're not going to force the ball to him. And, you know, we've seen teams that they get in these situations, they're going to force it to their guy. But that's what makes Andy Reid so tough is it could be anybody, you know, it could be anybody getting the ball in these situations. It's wild. And, yeah, I mean, I think it's just funny, like, to see Pat talk to uh, the NFL Network crew and just be like, hey, but can I just tell you something? Like, Miko Harmon had no idea that he scored the game winner. <laughs> and so I think this insight, like, I love the mic'd up. I love these insights. Like, just yeah. the perfect play call at the perfect time. And and honestly, this this play sort of got Steve Wilkes fired. And, um, you know, yeah. it, it's just, uh, it, it, you know, it's it's a tough situation. And it's a tough situation for Kyle Shanahan. I know there's a lot of talk about that. Like, he's lost three Super yeah. Bowls, one as a coordinator, Two as a head coach, but the two the head coaches have been to our guy Patty Mahomes, and so it's just like yeah. you got to get. You, everyone's like, "Well, what can you do better?" You got to find a way to beat them. Like, I don't think they did anything wrong. I think this was a classic example of the Chiefs winning it, and really San Fran not losing it. The Chiefs just really taking it from the 49ers. Yeah, and uh, and to your point, a lot. Of, I feel like the Super Bowl Fifty Four loss. There are more decisions. I know the overtime decision looms so large, and the way that he handled that. And that's what's kind of overshadowed everything else. But there were a lot of other opportunities where it wasn't necessarily coaching. There were there were some mistakes by the players. The McCaffrey fumble, um, the holding penalty in overtime. Yeah. There, you know, there were some things that, as a coach, you know, I, I don't think you can pin those things on him. It's it, it's a tough. It, he's kind of getting into that territory right now that Andy Reid used to be in. And he's a phenomenal yeah. coach who just hasn't been able to get the job done in these big spots. And, um, you know, hopefully you can look at Andy as some inspiration. Like, it's never too late to rewrite the story. Yeah, no, totally. I, I think that's just, he's right on the cusp. And I think the biggest thing for Kyle Shanahan is he's found his quarterback, right? He had Matt Ryan, which yeah. was great. And, and Matt Ryan had a hell of a year that year. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, I, I think he really, really believes in what Brock Purdy brings. They got to figure out a way to bring Brandon Ayuk back because, in my opinion, he's one of the most underrated receivers in the National Football League. I think he's a top eight receiver, top six receiver. In the year he's had almost 1,500 yards receiving, everyone's got those weapons. You got to sure up that right side of the line. But, I mean, he'll be back. They'll be right back in it next year. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, I think the offense, getting Ayuk back and just 
figuring out that offensive line, I think, are the two biggest things they're going to have to. And obviously now finding the defensive coordinator that's the right fit. There are a couple of good defensive minds that are out there, which we'll see what happens there. But um, but yeah, I mean, just another phenomenal season for KC. I'm so, I'm you know, I've done the show now. This is your first year. This is my second. Going to do the show for two years and two Super Bowls. It's been kind of incredible, uh, incredible to be along for the right. journey, to take you guys through the journey of of the coaching tape and break it all down. Chase, it was phenomenal doing this with you this year. Uh, hopefully, we can run it back just like the Chiefs next year. But either way, thank you guys for tuning in. Chase, thanks for all the insight. And we'll see you again next year for the 3 P.